Madhusudan Sai Global Humanitarian Mission. Several institutions in public service have been established in just the last 12 years, touching them in India. Nutrition, education and healthcare are fundamental rights of every human being and every child and it is the collective responsibility of the society to ensure that these basic needs are made accessible and available for all without any discrimination and absolutely free of cost. Shri Madhusudan Sai Institute of Medical Sciences and Research was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Shri Narendra Modi. Every individual's prosperity depends on society's collective prosperity. After all, we are all one connected whole. idea for leadership and I think that's the most important part if I can borrow from your book where you have quoted extensively from our scriptures the Indic knowledge system he quotes from Bhagavad Gita Yadyada Charati Shrestaha Dattat Deve Toro Janaha Sayat Pramanam Kurute Lokas Tadan Vartate very simple subject which, which means as the noble ones act in the society the kind of examples they set they are emulated by the others by the ordinary people and therefore to set example for the society is the noblest of the services that we can offer and this book is about celebrating one such example of leadership which we all know now as Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. I am happy that somebody took the courage because it's not easy to balance out all the aspects of his personality and still bring out a book without I ask to Mr. Modi ji to get biased. His persona, his charisma and all that he has done can always sweep you off your feet and you would end up doing hero worship. But somewhere drawing that fine line and staying very objective at the same time, proving it through several examples, both spiritual as well as social, that how in his personality there is a blend of this enlightened leadership which is the combination of spirituality and also the social side of things. I think in, in India alone has this model of leadership. When we look at the Western models of leadership, they are the models of, I would say, karmi in the sense the action, model of action. If you can prove yourself, you can be the leader through your actions. And on the Indian side, we have the concept of yoga, where we are performing actions, yet we are ni neither the doers nor the enjoyers of the action. That's a tall order from, if you look at it from through the prism of the Western philosophy. And then there is this synthesis of both, called Karma Yoga. And I think that is one word that truly defines the Prime Minister, a Karma Yogi, which is, the, which is the highest that one can attain while performing actions in the society yet remaining detached and absolutely equanimous. I'm so thrilled that when I was reading the book, all these wonderful concepts that are inherent in our scriptures have come out you know, in a beautiful way. And you have given examples, you have not just given some kind of a concept, but to give examples of how these concepts have been put to practice, how problems of the society on a daily basis, they have been solved. I spoke to him and said that, look, with this, we want this evening to be a little bit more than a book launch. We want to think of leadership perspectives that usually pass over. The person or the person's expression of leadership, even though we work in the space of social development, what I saw was very troubling. And what was more troubling to me was the state itself was an instrument of violence. And when the state, which is supposed to be the custodian of its citizens, in its own wisdom is actually causing the trouble, then whom do you turn to? And so that took me on a path of confrontational activism, took me to my battles, took me to my the courts, the human rights commissions, the different commissions of the country are set up under the constitution. And that is one part of my life and journey. And I realized that it can get your name in the newspaper. The drama can run for some time, but it wouldn't sort of solve a problem in perpetuity. And sometimes when the state is the cause of the problem, it doesn't want to solve the problem because then it's conceding it is the problem. So I was struggling to appreciate how do we really solve it. So Little and Weber, two great social scientists that I read a lot about, describe these are wicked problems. I do mention it in my book too. They don't have straightforward solutions. They're so complex that you can't really press a button and say next day it'll get solved. But our electoral cycles are five-year cycles. 
the expectation of a voter is you will actually solve the problem. Your manifesto will be implemented, everything will be taken care of and then the world is going to be a better place. I rewrite it almost 30 times or more. So I would start by first offering my congratulations for the effort and the research which has gone into this book. I would like to give him a huge round of applause. Ready to share the dice here with you. Um, I've uh, known Balu now for... Preach about what leadership is. It, is. it beautifully showcases examples of how leadership can define not just a personality, but also the course of a nation, a great nation, as India is today. Dr. Balu, you have unraveled a different and unknown side of our Honorable Prime Minister, a persona who is not very well known. He is known, but not very well known in that sense, through the TV or media. You have brought a very different perspective about this, this personality. As rightly alluded, leadership is a journey that continuously evolves with the person who strives to perfect it. Prime Minister Modi has been a lifelong learner and the insights that are captured in this book will become a reference for many of us. This part of the book launch is all about. So I'd like you now to join me in welcoming on stage the co-founder of...